Welcome food professionals and anyone else interested. Today I want to talk about chocolate, specifically tempering chocolate. First I'm going to cover the theory and then do a couple of demonstrations. By the end of this video I should have covered most points about why you do certain things. The whys behind the how to temper chocolate are most important. I'm probably going to go pretty fast, but the good part is you can rewatch any parts of this video and I will aim to answer any questions left in the comments section below. All right, everybody, let's get into it. Tempering chocolate. First, let's align on the vocabulary. Um, Want to make sure we all know what a liquid is. It's a fluid matter. What a solid is. It's molecules tightly packed that supports its own shape. The things in between are pretty important. Nuclei is the first particles that start to form a crystal. Nucleation is when multiple small particles start to form a crystal. Crystal growth is when these nuclei start to grow until they finally become one full crystal structure. Let's talk about what tempering is. It's the manipulation of chocolate crystal structure type with temperature to generate the desired nuclei to influence the crystal growth type. Cocoa butter in chocolate is the fat that crystallizes. Why do we temper chocolate? To avoid fat bloom, which is the whitish discoloration, to have a nice snap in our chocolate, to have all the sensory at attributes we like, the visual shiny appearance, the nice melting profile in our mouth. From a manufacturing perspective, we wanna make sure that chocolate contracts and easily demolds and maintains a long shelf life. The key points to tempering are temperature and understanding the melt profiles of the different crystals and nuclei. Later, I'm going to show you how to temper doing two different demonstrations. Whether you call it a trick, a method, or a technique, all of it follows the same fundamental science. So bloom is the whitish discoloration on chocolate seen on the picture on the left and on the picture on the right. That's Chocolate without bloom, it should be shiny. It's really dependent on the mold. You could have a matte finish in the mold that determines how shiny actually something is. Cocoa butter is the fat part of the chocolate, while the other parts of the chocolate are sugars, milk solids, cocoa solids. Bloom is directly related to the surface smoothness or not, and reflection or not. A dry desert or a very shiny frozen lake that reflects light like a mirror. So cocoa butter crystals can cause bloom on the surface or throughout the chocolate as well. Here we're looking at the surface under a microscope at 50 microns and 5 microns. And you can clearly see the surface is rough and not perfectly smooth. Cocoa butter consists of different fatty acids, monounsaturated oleic fatty acids, saturated acids, including palmitic and stearic acid. Later I abbreviate as O. S and P. The fatty acids are on a glycerol backbone in a triglyceride format. Most triglycerides in cocoa butter are symmetrical monounsaturated POP, SOS, and POS structure being the most predominant. The variable triglyceride forms can lead to a variety of crystal structures, aka polymorphic fat. What we're going to talk about next is a variety of crystal structures. <clears throat> so again, cocoa butter crystallization. Cocoa butter is a polymorphic fat requiring tempering to establish a stable crystallization in the product. Again, tempering is the manipulation of the crystal structure you want with temperature to generate the desired nuclei to influence the crystal growth. Here are all the various crystal structures that cocoa butter can have. This language or the symbols here follow the literature. So it's um, gamma, alpha, beta, prime, beta, or also they're listed as Roman, Roman numerals, I, double I, triple I, I, V, V, and VI. All of that was very uh, challenging for me to remember. So I'm just going to list them as one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'll refer to them as you know, beta five or beta six or beta four. One thing to remember is that these initial 
Crystal structures that form at a lower temperature, highlighted in yellow, are loose, compacting, and unstable forms. They will transform into these other crystal structure forms, which are more dense, compacting, and stable forms as you go to the other crystal structures, one through six. So let me just show you a little bit of what that looks like. The natural cocoa butter crystallization path without tempering. As your chocolate cools, your gamma will be created. They'll turn into the alpha structure, which then turns into the beta structure, which will then turn into the beta four structure, eventually to the beta six. What you need to know is that the beta six are the ones that create the bloom. Larger crystals, most stable, most compacting, but they're whitish, undesirable visual appearance, and they take longer to form, and they have a higher melting profile, so they're waxy in your mouth. If you temper to the beta-5 form, you have all the desired attributes you want, and it's a dense, compacting, stable form. Here's the um, temperature profile you need to follow in order to temper, temper your chocolate. First, you start out with hot chocolate, melted chocolate that has no crystals in it. All the fats melted out. And if you cool that chocolate fairly rapidly, you'll create many different crystals in it or nuclei, which I like to call them because they're very small. And you create the stable and unstable forms all these ones that we just covered. But all of the chocolate is not a solid fat. You can still see in this depiction, some of it is still a liquid fat. If you raise that temperature up just below the point, melting point of the beta-5 crystals, you'll melt out all the undesired crystals and be left with just the beta-5 crystals. If you continue the temperature curve and cool, all of these nuclei will influence the crystallization structure to be all beta-5 nuclei. To be honest, there's still some beta-4 left in there, but if you are very careful and can really control this temperature and mixing, you can be left with all beta-5. Next is the chocolate demonstrations. First one is a scrape surface heat exchanger method. And the second one is direct crystal addition to untempered chocolate. Went down to 82. Some parts are still 107. Get those bachelor mixes. Mixes this up better. Now let's get the stuff from the bottom mixed in with the stuff on top. Gonna fill them up from the bottom. You can see there's like a, a clear layer between the rabbit, the chocolate, and the plastic. That means the chocolate has contracted. Pulls away easily. Very shiny. Give it a little twist. Get everything else out. If it didn't contract, it wouldn't pull out like that. It would be stuck and it wouldn't be shiny. It can still bloom, given more time, but I'm um, pretty confident based on the temperatures that it was tempered just fine. Because we know the science, follow the science, and because we follow the science, it works. Nine. 
the nice part is if you temper correctly it will contract and release from the mold you can reuse your molds many 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 times don't clean them don't wash them with soap and water you don't need to um, there's no contamination on it just chocolate on chocolate keep your hands clean keep your tools clean you can reuse it uh, given you tempered properly tempered properly you have good release this has already been tempered and I'm going to use this as a source of my nuclei to influence the crystal setting for my beta prime, my desired crystal. And we're going to make another wrap. Very fine particles. And if you can already tell, the edge is starting to lose its shine. That means it's setting up. It's an indication that it was well tempered without a temper meter. You don't know till it's set and you demold. Gave this rabbit a chance to cool in my garage where it was about mid fifties. Then it sat overnight in my kitchen. My temperature drops down to 60 degrees. It's been sitting here all day. It usually takes an hour to cool, but cooling is a different science as well. You can see it's uh, demolded. There's, there's, I mean, this spot right here maybe is still stuck, but for the most part, looks okay. Looks demolded to me. Came out pretty fine. Came out all right. This chocolate as a test, you can see it's doesn't have any bloom on it either. That's how you temper chocolate. Hope you enjoyed those videos. Hope you learned something about tempering chocolate. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Take care, everybody.